Hey there and welcome to Matt's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to change a clock spring on this uh, 2003 PT Cruiser. That's the part behind the steering wheel that transfers the power into the steering wheel for things like your horn button and your airbag. And uh, one thing if you're doing anything like changing your steering rack, you uh, want to be really careful if you ever disconnect the steering shaft that you don't turn it with it disconnected. And actually the reason I'm making this video is not because one of these parts failed on a PT, but because I did exactly that. I was changing a steering rack and I ended up having it about half a turn off. Um, and it ended up wrecking the clock spring. So the first thing we're going to do here is put the steering dead center. Because I'm actually salvaging a part off this car and putting it on the car that I broke the, the uh, part on. So uh, I'm going to set the steering dead straight on this remove that clock spring center up my steering on the other car and install the clock spring and make sure it doesn't move in between and it all should be good then so there we go got the wheels straight and also important the steering wheel is straight so now we know it's centered and straight and if we put the other car back together the same we're not going to have any problems so all you need to do this is uh, 13 millimeter socket a little pry bar like that and uh, the oh and a, and a Phillips screwdriver which I'm gonna have to run and get you got to get that cover off there's two screws here two Phillips screws okay guys so just a couple Phillips number two screws in here there just like that there we go and then that just take your key out and it just clips together at the back there so you just go like that take your tilt lever down and just like that your lower cover and then your tilt it down a little lock your tilt lever pull that off now for the uh, hard part getting the airbag out the airbag first of all you want to disconnect your battery at least 45 minutes before touching this airbag because uh, the modules in the vehicle can store power and you could end up setting off the airbag uh, pretty unlikely but just be safe rather than sorry um, there's no battery in this car so we're good there so we just got to get in here and there's a couple of pins and there's basically um, a springed clip that clips over these these pins they're kind of like the head of a nail where they slide through and then they catch and so uh, just a little pry bar like this Chrysler actually has a special tool to remove these and I of course don't have that tool so I just use something like that and uh, basically we're gonna try and spread the, the spring clip apart I can't really get the camera in there to show you that but uh, you know I'll do my best to explain it as I go here and uh, it's not easy I already did the one on the other car for practice and uh, it pretty well I was cursing at it I can tell you now what I'm gonna try and do because what I noticed on the other one is that this clip kinda it's hard to explain I'll show you when I get the airbag off but the, the clip can pry out on one end if you pry hard enough and that's what I'm gonna try and accomplish because that'll completely release it. This is the actual clock spring, this part here, that we're trying to get off. So this uh, green plug here, you'll have to just uh, pull the safety tab back, depress the, uh, the little button on it, and it just unplugs like that real easy. Now I should uh, take a second and mention that this clock spring is completely different on a 2006 or newer PT. Um, I don't know if the airbag attaches the same way or not. Okay, so that worked. I pried up the uh, end of the clip there, and now I'm going to pry up the bog, and you want to make sure that you don't mess up the edge of the steering wheel. Okay, guys, I've got the airbag loose, so there's going to be wires. You don't want to wildly just pull out on it, so just go like so. You can see the pins I'm talking about there. Okay, you can see the pins. You can see in there the... Uh, where they go through the spring and that hole and uh, you can see that yellow plug in the middle you just squeeze in two tabs 
pull that off and then that other one just has a single squeeze tab this one here okay guys so to squeeze in here and that just pulls out like that just a delicate little plug and then this one okay guys this little wire here there's a little tab underneath and you have to push it down and pull out on the wire so a little screwdriver works or I used my knife so that's all there is to it so these these pins here you can see they have a slot in them and that locks that locks right in that hole there you can see how that clip comes through and normally this other piece comes through here too so it locks that around that in that notch on that pin and so what I did is I pried one side of this out and then I was able to pry the other side aside enough to uh, to get it to clear right there okay guys now there's just one 13 millimeter bolt here and you can see there's a couple holes here with threads in them that's for a steering wheel puller if you have one. Oh, you also want to disconnect your um, cruise control wiring and that is just a little little push tab there and then just pull that wire out carefully so with all that disconnected those are all your your wires for your um, clock spring that's actually what we're we're aiming for that's the electrical bit I'm talking about so we're just going to uh, zip that bolt out of there I like to use an impact just make sure it's running the right way so there we go so normally this is the time you'd set up your steering wheel puller but another thing you can do uh, that works pretty good is just go like this and at first it will seem like you're not making any progress but uh, trust me this works you just need to get a good pull on it keep rocking and you'll see it start to move on the spline like I am right now and you're making progress you just put steady pressure just like that you just keep rocking it back and forth with steady pressure on it and it just works its way loose on that spline there so this is the part that we're actually aiming to get the, uh, the clock spring here and so you want to be careful so we had our steering wheel dead center so that's all good normally when you're removing these they're junk and you're changing them and putting a new one on but since I'm trying to salvage this one to put on another car I have to be extra careful on the removal process okay guys so I went ahead and uh, just cleaned everything up here with a wet wipe a good opportunity to get down around the base of all your switches and stuff clean the part up a little and uh, like the part clips in here and here so uh, I didn't mention that on removal but it does you can see it's got those uh, those clips there so you line those up and then uh, of course make sure your wheels dead straight like that that wide notch goes right there and then this if you haven't moved it should go straight back on And I see these two little tabs kind of hook on each side of that uh, that little tab there. So that's how that kind of goes. Show those flock of Canada geese flying south for the winter, I guess. That's pretty cool. I believe that all clipped in just make sure those clips lock in and uh, and then we'll plug in our our wire here before we forget just make sure you hold in on it while you're uh, plugging that in so that you don't uh, push it back off you could plug that in after the steering wheels on as well now we grab our steering wheel and you can see those uh, I put them back in the, the holes you can see how much I had to pry in there getting off but just make sure you don't mess up that plastic or at least not too much you can see I chewed it up a little so what happens when you don't have the right tool for the job so so now those three wires just carefully thread them through that hole at the top there you gotta line that spline up on there plug in your cruise control just make sure it clicks 
and then you want to you want to put your bolt in here and that's the one thing um see it had some loctite on it so you want to put some loctite on it there we go that'll work just you don't that's one bolt you really don't want to uh spin loose on you okay now i'm just going to zip it on with my impact but i will check it with the ratchet as well just a lot of threads there so so in my experience the uh, torque on the steering wheel is around uh, 50 uh, foot pounds I'll leave a, a caption for what it is on this but that's what I'm going to aim for here is about 50 60 foot pounds <sighs> that ain't going anywhere so now we take our our airbag and uh, again make sure you don't have a battery connected in the vehicle when you're doing this so that, uh, that little wire goes in there and that wire just like that and now just make sure you're not pinching wires as you're putting the airbag back in just look at where those pins are going and stuff and then I believe this is the easy part because I'm pretty sure I can just push it and it's going to push right through those clips. I believe it caught. I'm just going to check from the back side to make sure they both caught. No, just the top caught. So don't get rough with it, just push in uh, good pressure, good even pressure. There, I think we got it there. I'll double check again. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the uh, covers and put them back on here. I like to clean everything while it's apart. Wet wipes work good for that. Okay, so we'll just uh, put that tilt lever down. Sneak this cover up there. You got to kind of spread it over the ignition switch there. So, you want it tilted all the way down, lock the lever, sneak this cover in from the top, and just clip them together at the back, and then you get your two screws, get your two Phillips screws, and you get your son to pass you your Phillips screwdriver. Thank you, son. And I like to just tighten them both in there before I snug them up completely. There. Both of them tight. That is all there is to uh, changing the clock spring on your 2001 to 2005 uh, Chrysler PT Cruiser. I do hope you found this video helpful. Thanks a lot for watching Matt's Garage. And stay tuned for more PT repair content. Have yourself a great day. I figured I'd throw in a little bonus footage at the end here. This is the uh, old broken clock spring. You can see I sheared the uh, clip points right off. And uh, I'll show you what's inside one of these. While well, you don't want to turn one too far. So there, it's basically that ribbon there. And, uh, you know, it's got enough slack to wind back and forth the amount of the steering wheel and uh, I just wound it too far so this is all electrical ribbon here and you can see it's soldered into the contact points and there's where it plugs in and then soldered into the contact points and there's where it plugs in so yeah pretty simple but this is actually about a $400 part for the PT Cruiser they can be pretty pricey so be careful when you're working around them that you don't uh, overstress them.